Hello everybody, Lord Almighty here. Today is Sunday, February 19th, 2017, and it is gorgeous today. Temperatures are in the mid-60s, and of course, I gotta go fishing. I don't have a set plan today, I'm just gonna hit up some local spots to see if I can put something together. I wanted to start here to see if I could break the ice with a couple of pickerel, maybe some bass if they're around, and uh, we'll see where the day takes us after that. So let's go. Mid 60s in the middle of February? Yes, please. There's a pickerel right out there. Oh. Swiped at it. I think he swam off. Probably saw my ugly face and skedaddled. Can't say I blame him. There he is. Came back for it after all. There we go, not bad for a first fish of the day. Let's see if I can get the hooks out of his face. There we go. I feel to let go of the line. There we go, okay. Had to be a little rough with him, but I think he'll be all right. There he goes. There we go. Oh boy, he's got this thing way down his mouth. I hope it doesn't bite through it. Let's bring this fish in quick. Oh, get off of those sticks. Okay. With this fish, he played with this lure probably for about a dozen casts before he decided he wanted to eat it. Don't go back in there. Don't go back in that mouth. Okay. There we go. Nice wintertime pickerel. Nice and fat. These fish are probably starting to get eggs because they spawn really early in the year. So hopefully that one will make lots of baby pickerel for future fishing generations to enjoy. Every time you catch a pickerel, you want to check the line for nicks. I can see a couple of small ones in the leader here, so I'm going to clip off and retie. I'm using a, an 8 pound fluorocarbon leader because the fluorocarbon stands up a little bit better to the abrasion of pickerel teeth than monofilament does. Sometimes it doesn't matter, though. I've seen even medium-sized pickerel saw through 30-pound braid. So, no matter what you use, if it catches that fish's tooth just right, you're getting bit off. Nothing you can do about it. It's just part of pickerel fishing. Okay, so caught a couple pickerel to start the day off, which was super fun but I want to see what else is going on around here. So I'm going to pick up and move to another spot and uh, we'll see what that place has to offer us. So see you in a few minutes. Or for you guys, it's just going to be a couple of seconds. Okay, here I am at the next spot. The main reason why I've come to this spot is because I want to see if the crappie have started to come up shallow. If they have, we could be in for a real treat today. So, let's see if they're in yet.
There we go. There's a fish. Oh, it's a pickerel. Pickerel on the crappie jig. Whew, that fish is cold. There we go. Another cold water pickerel. Poor man's musky. Get back in there. Well, this spot didn't really pan out. Got that pickerel early on, but uh, no other hits. Certainly didn't see any crappie swimming around. So I'm going to move to another spot, and hopefully that one will treat me a little bit better than this one did. Be back in a second. All right, well, here's spot number three. This is Spring Lake. I'm sure you recognize it by now. I was struggling whether or not to, to actually come here today because this is really the only place that I've been filming uh, this year so far. But on the other hand, fishing's been good here. So, you know, if I can get a few fish, then I say no harm, no foul. This place is railed today. Not just with other fishermen, but with people walking their dogs and kids on the playground. Just a ton of people around. I guess it's to be expected with the gorgeous weather that we have today. Alright, well, not feeling it here at Spring Lake. I had uh, committed myself to seeing if I could get some bass, but nothing moving. So, I'm going to have to be the one to move. I got one more spot I want to try before I call it a day. So, see you in a couple seconds. All right, so, funny story. I got to the spot that I originally wanted to fish, and the parking lot was full. And I mean 100% full. There were no open parking spaces. And it's not like this was a small parking lot either. There was a couple hundred parking spaces, and every last one of them had a car in it. So, I turned around and I decided to hit this spot instead. This is Franklin Lake. I wasn't planning on fishing here. Um, I've never fished it this early in the season before, so I'm not quite sure what to expect. But, I'll see if I can make something happen to close out the day. Alright guys, well, I have been fishing all day and I am starving. So I think I am going to wrap it up here and go get something to eat. The day kind of sputtered to a conclusion. Last two spots didn't really produce anything. I did catch three pickerel, which isn't great, but you know what? It's a lot better than I normally do in the middle of February, so I will definitely take it. And this might not be the last bit of February fishing I do, because looking at the extended forecast, Temps are supposed to be in the 50s and 60s for most of next week, too. So, even though that bucktooth bastard out of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania saw his shadow earlier this month, I think we're poised for an early spring, and that makes me extremely happy. So thank you all for joining me today, and I will see you on the next adventure. Hey everybody! Um, before I ended the video, I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about something that happened recently and I think it's important that you be made aware of it and that we discuss it. I was recently confronted by an individual uh, while I was filming uh, who took exception to me filming at a particular location claiming that it would result in people from quote unquote all over coming to that location and fishing. There was no screaming, there was no violence, it was just uncomfortable. Now, whenever I'm confronted by someone, I always do my best to try to get into their shoes and see where they're coming from and see if they have, you know, any legitimate complaints. And the more I think about what this individual said, the more I realize that he was behaving entitled and he was being very selfish. Basically, he was telling me not to use a public place in a way that was perfectly legal. I found this particular location way back when I first moved here 
uh, by using a Hagstrom MacBook. That's how I found a lot of the locations around here, to be honest. In the first one or two years, I had a map of the county. I just looked at it and started circling spots and going to them and seeing if it was worth fishing or not. Aside from the Hagstrom map book, there are so many other resources that people can use to find fishing spots just about anywhere. Even here in the state of New Jersey, we have things like the Fish and Wildlife website, which calls out fishing spots by name and even gives you directions on how to get there. We have GeoWeb, which is a GIS mapping tool run by the state DEP and that can show you pretty much any water body in the entire state with remarkable detail. Plus, add to that Google Earth, which everyone has access to these days, and simple word of mouth, just people telling other people. And there are so many ways that fishing spots spread among everyone. I think it's naive to single out a fishing YouTuber, or fishing YouTubers in general, uh, as any kind of a problem. Because, first of all, there is no problem, okay? These are all public places that I fish. Anyone can use them, regardless of how they found out about them in the first place. Second of all, me and other fishing YouTubers are such a drop in the bucket compared to all the other information that's available to allow people to find fishing spots. And really what this all boils down to is, at the end of the day, if you're using public land for anything, you have to accept the fact that other people are going to want to use it as well. And their desire to use that land is no more or no less important than yours is. We have to respect other people's rights to use the lands that we do. We can share. It's not impossible. So should anyone else ever find themselves in such a situation, whether they're filming or not, and they're approached by someone who is essentially telling them that they're not welcome there, I encourage you to know your rights and stand up for yourself. Because so many more people are on your side than not. If someone tries to intimidate you for doing something on public land that is perfectly legal, they are flat out wrong. And you can tell them I said that. I know that New Jersey is a very populated state. It's the most densely populated state in the country. But believe it or not, there is enough land, there's enough water, there is enough fish to go around. And if we all follow the rules, and we all respect each other, there is no reason why we can't share the woods and waters of this state with everyone else. I know jumping on the internet and asking people to respect each other is probably like asking a bird not to fly. But at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We all have to share our parks, our towns, our counties, our states, our country, our planet. Why wouldn't we do the absolute best we could to get along with each other? So that's all I have to say about that little misadventure. It, uh, it has been bothering me a little bit since it happened, so at the very least, uh, I appreciate you listening. And uh, whether you agree with me or not, feel free to go into the comments. Um, but please, be respectful of me and be respectful of other people and their opinions. And hopefully the next video will be a lot more fun and carefree because really, what do we use fishing for? We use it to de-stress, to unwind, and to turn off the world, if only for a few moments. Again, thank you all so much for listening. And I will see you on the next adventure.